Hey everyone, Josh here from Fresh Start Customs and today you're probably watching this video because you want to learn more on why a design that you purchase online or that you get from somebody else that has not been tested with your material size isn't working correctly. There's common reasons that, you, that I have listed below and we'll kind of cover all of those reasons why and then how you can do edits to fix those reasons um, and you may also be here on how to resize a file and at the very end of this video I'm gonna go in depth and resize this entire file so you guys can see how to make edits to a design um, that way you can see live what's gonna do I'm gonna do that editing pretty quickly I'm not gonna stop and um, do like an hour long edit um, I'm gonna just do a really quick edit at the end so you can see that in detail and then if you want a more in-depth tutorial I have that and I'll show you guys how to access that at the end so let's go ahead and jump into this and show you the reason why your material may not be working so the first up is basically your exact material thickness is different than what's listed so if you go into any of my purchase designs on my Etsy shop, and this will be with most sellers, in the description section of what you're purchasing, if you scroll down, they usually have a materials use, used and warning section. So right here is the materials that I use. It's a quarter inch material, but there is multiple different sizes that can be sold as a quarter inch, and that's very important when it comes to 3D designs. So my exact size, I have in parentheses here 0.227 inches for the acrylic it's the proof grade material and this 0.227 inches is with the masking tape on both sides so that may get a little bit smaller if you take the masking tape off and you measure with that but that will also affect your kerf and we'll get into that more in a little bit and then the uh, eighth inch material that I use is also proof grade material on this design and the exact size is 0 0.137 inches and if you see here you can use a digital caliper it's this little tool right here you can get it from Menards or online at Amazon I'll try and put a link below otherwise I got the link the link below in this video as well that you can check out um, so as you can see this is showing the exact thickness of my material with masking tape on both sides just like I have listed um, in the design here so that is how you can find your actual material size this is super important so if you do have the exact material listed uh, it should in theory work perfectly you upload this straight to the Glowforge UI hit print then you put your materials together using a rubber tip hammer like the instructions say once you get the file and once you put all that together it should work perfectly um, now even the same material can vary in size so you will want to measure that that material so if it's more than like if this number from a 7 turns to an 8 or a 6 that should be fine it'll be a little bit tighter or a little bit looser if it gets a little bit more than that you may want to make some edit changes like I'm going to show you this will be impossible to make the material work for any size material that's between let's say for example quarter inch can be anywhere from 0 0.2 inches all the way up to 0 0.25 inches so it's impossible to make a design that's gonna fit every material without editing so you're gonna have to learn how to edit and I'm gonna show you that at the very end here so let's jump into the next issue that can be a, uh, be a cause of this so if you're using a different program to resize the design after like I'm going to show you at the end here so for example I'm using Illustrator if you use Illustrator you shouldn't have this issue but if you use an old version of Inkscape I think they fixed this in the new version of Inkscape but if you're using an older version of Inkscape um, I believe a lot of people who use Mac computers are still on the old version because they didn't update that yet um, your program may be resizing that design after you either import or save the design so right here is the correct settings that you're gonna want to resize it back to the correct way with your material or with your uh, program like Inkscape the only reason why I have this is another user sent me this to show um, in to show you guys the correct design here or the correct design import I should say um, so this right here in your document properties 
This display units is usually either PX, I think it's pixels or points. You're going to want to change that to inches and your scale will say 96 originally. You want to change that to 72, so it says 72 and it'll be 72 in gray over here. And then you should be good to go. You should be able to um, hit save and that should resize your um, material back. And now this is all according to another user. I have not used this myself because I don't use Inkscape. But um, if you don't need to edit the, the project, you upload straight to Glowforge UI. This design will work perfectly exactly how I have it if you're using the same material size. If you're not, then just use that to rescale if you're using Inkscape. Otherwise, Illustrator, you just open it as is. There will be no scaling issues. Um, then the next thing is your machine's curve settings is different. So, for example, if, you're, if you have a different machine other than a Glowforge, this is usually not an issue, but this is just something that I want to mention that could cause a little bit more wiggle room like in your slots and stuff. The kerf is basically the material that is evaporated as the laser cuts out these um, uh, little slots here that can cause more wiggle room. So that's usually not an issue, but that could be one thing and then you just have to compensate that by editing the, the, the tabs and I'll show you that at the end just like I said. And then lastly is going to be following the instructions that a uh, designer gives you. So for example, this one's going to use a rubber tip hammer. It, this one does not have glue, but you can add glue in between the bases if you need. And then um, etc. So for example, if there's a project that uses magnets, like I got that magnet wallet, you'll want to use the right size magnets. Um, so that's pretty much all, uh, all four things. And now let's go ahead and jump into the editing. So I'm sorry if I'm talking a little bit fast. This is going to be a longer video. If you made it this far and you know how to edit from here, you're good to go. Or if you understand why your file may have resized and this answered your troubleshooting steps, you're good to go from here. So from this point forward, I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit quicker on the editing here. And like I said, I'll show you that video um, right here is that video. So if you type this video... Um, title into YouTube, you can find the video that sh goes a little bit more in depth, slower, showing you how to do the edits, how to do like the, um, the actual, let me pull it up here, Pathfinder and alignment tools and how to access, access those more slowly. But I'm going to go ahead and quickly show you this. Um, so for example, let's say we want to change this design so all of the wood here is a quarter inch versus eighth inch. Um, so to do that, all you need to do is change th these tabs here to a quarter inch versus an eighth inch because these are the only tabs that the actual thickness of the wood is going into. These slots here are all the thickness of the acrylic tabs that are going into this. Um, and I'm going to pull one of these acrylic tabs from the other file that comes with it. Because when you get the file, it's going to look like this. I'm opening both the acrylic parts here and the wood parts here. So that's what I have opened in Illustrator. So I'm going to grab one of these acrylic tabs here and just show you what happens here. So if I change that to this direction here. This acrylic tab is supposed to go into this slot. I'm going to zoom in and show you the difference here. As you can see here, the acrylic tab is slightly bigger than the wooden cutout here. Um, with that wooden cutout, this acrylic tab is basically going to fit into this wooden cutout really tightly so it doesn't wobble back and forth. Um, now, if it's too tight, you can actually adjust the width of the material. In this case, it would be the height. You can turn, you can crank that up if it's if it's uh, too tight, or crank it down if it's loose, and that's how you would change those slots. But we're not going to change those. I'm going to show you how to change the base here, and how changing the base can affect your actual acrylic um, insert here as well. So let's go ahead and just drop that acrylic insert to show you this as we edit. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And as you can see, this acrylic piece fits in here perfectly, um, right in between these two tabs. But uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab 
this tab right here and I'm gonna hold down shift and grab this tab down here so I can edit them at the same time so right now it's set for an eighth inch in between minus the kerf um, and you can check out those other videos like I said for that but what I'm gonna do is change that to the thickness minus the kerf of my quarter inch acrylic so if I wanted to make this all out of quarter inch acrylic I'm gonna put two one four two and that's going to change the width of these. So as you've seen, that changed that width quite a bit there. So I'm going to do the same thing to these two here. And I'm going to change that to 2142. Hit enter. And as you can see, they are now a quarter inch. Now this is where the, the issue comes into play too. As you can see, it made it bigger from inside out. So now your acrylic piece isn't going to fit in between these two pieces perfectly. That's going to cause it to, um, like if you bang this acrylic piece in there, it's going to cause this inside to bow. So what you need to do now is you need to grab both of these outside tabs, hold shift, and then drag it over, and then lock it into the side of this acrylic tab over here. We're going to grab these two over here, and we're going to do the same thing, hold shift, lock it in right there so now you have the actual acrylic that's going to be on the inside just like it was before now it's perfectly set for the quarter inch on the base but now you ran into the issue of the tabs being too short for your your material thickness so all you got to do there is grab your little rectangular tool uh, move to the top here move to the bottom and then move it all the way across the side here I, I usually like to just lock it in like this and then lock it in this way too. That way you can line it up perfectly. Um, now when you have that selected, I'm going to just turn that to red color so you can see what's going on here. So as you can see, I just kind of expanded those two. I'm going to select both the new rectangle I made and the old piece. I'm going to do Pathfinder and Unite that. So now that that tab is the correct size, I'm going to move to the next one and do the same thing over here there we go I want to make sure that I got that on there correctly there we go I'm gonna select both of them and hit unite again there you go I now have my new acrylic center piece that is now matching the outside tabs of your new thickness of your material so as you can see there's a lot of work that goes into these um, material edits. This was a pretty easy one for just the wood, but you're not done yet because what you need to do now is grab this new edited piece, throw it back into your acrylic your acrylic section here, and as you can see, if I line this up with the old piece here, you can see it's now bigger than that old piece. Let me zoom in a little bit. So it's now bigger than that old piece because that's our new edited piece for the uh, quarter inches right here. So I won't need these old pieces anymore. So I'm going to delete all five of these. And then I'm just going to copy and paste this one a couple times um, to get five new pieces back for our new edited uh, stand. So I'm going to go ahead and move those up. Right there, as you can see, I've got five new pieces for our quarter inch material um, for the base and the acrylic tabs now. And now you would have to do the same exact thing for your acrylic base. You can do that manually like I just did before. Or what I like to do, um, now that we've got this acrylic piece copied, I'm going to delete this one. What I like to do is I like to grab this. Um, now I want to make a couple changes here really quick because I don't know if that's perfectly center. Like I said, I want to just align these to make sure they're centered there. I'm going to group just those for right now and we're going to center it this way. So there we go. So I've got that perfectly centered exactly how it was before with our quarter inch. I'm going to grab this and actually drag it into that acrylic uh, base design here. I'm going to turn it this way and then I'm going to just line it up with our current tabs and show you guys what's going on here. So let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this. So as you can see here, uh, the, 
the inside tabs match up perfectly with that old eighth inch material just like I wanted so these acrylic inserts can fit in between when the base is built. Um, now we would have to edit this tab on the acrylic if you want to but what I like to do is if you grab the outside blue edge here and then just expand it by 2.5 inches so that'd be two clicks up on both ways. Now you can see that matches the acrylic perfectly. I'm going to grab that red acrylic in the back and just hit delete and now you have the new acrylic base here. I'm going to just highlight this, turn it to red, just because that's my personal color for acrylic here in, in this design. And that's it. You can then go to File, Save As, and then you can save it as a new acrylic stand. You can type it in as, as you want. I'm not going to do that because I don't need this. But that's pretty much it. You would do the same thing. You can file, save as, and then you can save it as the um, Adobe file, or you can save it as an SVG. Um, if you're super new and you don't know what the SVG file is, that's exactly what you need to upload to your Glowforge UI. So you would save that as an SVG file, and then you can export that into the Glowforge UI, and then you should be good to go. Um, so that's pretty much it, you guys. That is pretty much a rundown of why it may not be working from the, the get-go um, with your material size if you're not using the exact same material. And that is how you edit an entire file. I hope this went pretty in-depth for you. Um, like I said, you can go to YouTube, check out these two videos. Just type in this video um, link here, um, or here's the direct link up top here. And you can go straight to the video with that direct link. And then here is the material thickness um, and explaining how to find your material thickness. If you need one of these digital calipers, there is a one right there in the description. You can also copy and paste that into the description by just typing it in there now if you need to. But that is pretty much it, you guys. I hope this helped you guys out, and I hope this helped troubleshoot a file that you may have purchased, whether it's from me or from another seller. And I hope you guys have a great day. We'll catch you guys next time.